Okay, we're going to make a, a start. I've um, met as many people as I, I can. Welcome. It's really, it's really very good to see you today. Um, in case you're wondering uh, where we are, we are in one uh, Great George Street. We're, we are here later on for the um, Ajax Parade. So Gary Mond is behind me. You'll probably see that we're in the same room at different ends. He's, he's waving. We hope that you won't have any uh, echoing, so we apologise uh, if that happens. We're delighted to be able to go on the Ajax Parade, and we will need to leave the meeting at noon uh, to make sure that we're there. And just to let you know in advance that Amanda Bowman will then be chairing the meeting. So thank you, thank you again. Um, before we start the meeting, there's some very, very tragic news from Jerusalem, from the old city. I am told that there has been a terrorist attack. One person is dead, three are injured. We obviously have all our thoughts for the tragic victims. That is really uh, very, very worrying news. I am told that the attacker has, has been killed. If there's any more on that, we will update you uh, during the course of the um, plenary. Some good news at the outset that I think we should say at the beginning, we should absolutely thank the government for prescribing Hamas in full. That is very appreciated. The Board of Deputies, along with our other communal organisations, have lobbied for this for some time. This really is going to make a big difference. Uh, Priti Patel, uh, Home Secretary, also personally telephoned me herself to give this news, and it really is something that is very appreciated. We're also, we're also very uh, grateful that President Herzog is coming uh, for a visit to the uh, UK and he's going to be coming, coming tomorrow. So I will be going to, uh, to have a meeting with him. He's published, there's a very interesting article that's just gone online. He wants to absolutely stress that he wants to restore the faith in dialogue. I think that is absolutely excellent. So we look forward to telling you more about um, his visit. Some housekeeping. Can I remind you that you are all responsible for your uh, conduct? If you want to ask a question, I'm not at home with my big screen. So can you please uh, make sure that you, uh, you, you, you press your virtual hand? If you've got any problem, the board team will be um, happy to help. And can you give your name uh, and your and your constituency. That will be very, very appreciated. So again, uh, welcome to you all. Can I start with approval of the minutes of the meeting on the 25th of July? I haven't had any correspondence. I'm going to take those as approved. Thank you. I think it's very important that we give tribute to the amazing woman, Flo Kaufman, absolute uh, trailblazer. This is this is a, a huge loss to to the board and the community. Um, this was very very sad news received after the um, last board meeting. And Flo Kaufman, of course, was the amazing long standing uh, deputy. I did go to um, the Lavoya, but my predecessor, my esteemed predecessor Henry Grumwald, is now going to say a few words for our appreciation of this very very special lady who was so dear to many of us and has made such a positive contribution to the Board of Deputies and to British Jury. So Henry, over to you. Marie, Madam President, thank you very much for giving me the honour of inviting me to make this short tribute to Flo. Flo was a powerhouse. Um, I had the privilege of serving alongside her at the Board for many many, many, many years. And if I say that the board meant so much to her, that is an underestimate. She first became a deputy for Emuna, another organization that was really close to her heart, many, 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 many years ago and progressed through the board, speaking from the floor, making her voice known very clearly. She had very firm views from the floor of the board and then working her, her way up through the committee system of the board as it then was. She chaired the board's Israel committee, organized many trips to Israel and represented the board on many occasions, both in the media and at other places. I have so many fond memories of her and so many good 
and funny, if that's the right way to say, memories of her. When she organized one trip to Israel, we'd agreed, some of us, that we would each take a bottle of a good malt whiskey to give to the various groups that we met because they really appreciated a good malt whiskey in Israel. And I had completely forgotten that she'd asked me to get a bottle to take. And I was in the middle of doing a trial up in Leeds Crown Court. And I came out of court at the end of the day, turned my phone on. And there was a message saying, McCallan 18. And I thought to myself, I have not had a client called McCallan who was sentenced to 18 years imprisonment. And it took a while and a further message from Flo for me to appreciate that she was asking me to get a very special bottle of McCallan 18 year old malt whiskey to take to a very special person in Israel. We worked alongside each other for many, many years. We didn't always see eye to eye. I think it wasn't possible for anyone, possibly not even her beloved husband, Aubrey, always to see eye to eye with Flo. But the disagreements were always very, very professional and we would talk our way through things. She was elected the uh, treasurer of the board on the day that I was first elected a vice president in 1997. And that was a day that we will always remember, not just because it was an important step for us in terms of involvement with the board, but because the then re-elected president, Eldred Tabachnik, said to us on the Sunday morning, and in those days the election happened and you were immediately in position in the post to which you'd been elected. He said, Flo, Henry, you're free this evening, aren't you? Yes, why Eldred? we're going to meet Yasser Arafat. And we went to the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in Hyde Park into a very lavish suite and saw this man clearly suffering from Parkinson's. And there was a very brief meeting for a particular purpose that I won't go on to now, but that was the first joint communal thing that we did as honorary officers. We did many, many more thereafter. She served as treasurer for six years and then was elected a vice president for six years. And I served alongside her both when I was vice president, senior vice president, and then president. And I know how much work she put in to the board. But although the board was clearly the most important organization to her in her life, she had a life away from the board. She had a wonderful family. She was a magistrate for many, many years and became treasurer of the Magistrates Association. She was chair of licensing for Barnet, sat in its valuation tribunal. She went on to become president of the Rotary Club of London. And she was chairman of the European Jewish Council for many years and vice president of the Commonwealth Jewish Council. She had, and this was perhaps one of her foibles, but a beloved one nonetheless, she had been photographed with just about every senior politician, member of the royal family, wherever we went. It gave her pleasure, and she deserved that pleasure in return for the work that she put in. Even when she stepped down from the board, she could not remain silent and quiet. She trained and worked as a volunteer at Kenwood House in London. And then, as we all know, very sadly, illness struck, that, that dreaded cancer, and she fought it in the way that she had fought her position on so many things for so many years. And she fought it and she fought it. And she overcome it. When she became really ill, Aubrey said to me, the cancer was sleeping and, and it wasn't the cancer that carried her off. It was an infection that her body was unable to fight. Her death was thankfully a peaceful one surrounded by her family, Aubrey, her children, her sons, her daughter-in-law, her many, many grandchildren whom she loved and lived for. And if any of us have to go, and we do all have to go, I hope that our ends can be as peaceful as that in the bosoms of our family. She would have been here today and she would have gone on to the Ajax Parade because that's something that she never, never missed. And that perhaps is just a sign of the commitment that she gave to everything in which she involved herself. May those of us who knew her continue to think of her and learn from her and from the way that she acted and reacted. And may her memory be a blessing to us all. And Marie, thank you for the opportunity of saying those words. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Henry. Um, I think I can see uh, on screen Paul, Paul Edlin. Uh, I think he probably would like to say some words. So over to you, Paul. Paul, can you unmute? Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to say a few words of, of my own following Henry's excellent tribute. Um, I had the privilege of being an officer with Flo for six years. Um, I think it was six years and many years before that on the international division, etc. cetera. Um, and I admired her immensely over these years. Uh, there's one thing I would like to say that add to what Henry said is that Flo as treasurer was solely responsible for the changes in the finances of the board that we see today in that she was primarily the driver, along with Henry in all fairness, for the purchase of the building in Bloomsbury Square, which the board had for many years, or for several years anyway, which was a huge financial success for the board because I think we trebled, roughly trebled our investment and Flo was responsible for pushing that forward and driving it. She was also responsible for many years in getting donors to big donors, small donors, all donors to open their wallets for the board. And she did that in a most charming way and nobody could ever refuse her. She organized for many, many years, she chaired the dinner committee and many donors, which otherwise may have been bypassed, were approached and gave huge sums of money to the board. And that, along with the with the purchase of Bloomsbury Square, which was subsequently sold. I must say, I'm, I'm sorry it's been sold because it was a great venue for, a status venue for the board that we no longer have, but that's by the by. But Flo can solely take tribute for the huge amount of revenue that transformed the board into the state it is today where we have positive bank balances to what it was previously with negative bank balances. And that, will be a legacy which will be passed on, I hope, and sure, we'll be sure that it will happen for generations to come. Thank you very much, President. Thank you. They really are heartwarming tributes. Flo just cannot be replaced. She's just amazing, amazing lady. May her memory be a blessing. Um, moving on to the um, executive minutes. Um, I haven't had anybody uh, ask any questions, so I'm going to take those as approved. Uh, thank you. Uh, coming on to the president's, uh, president's statement, can I just go through a couple of uh, changes at the board, at board team? We have a couple of key members of staff who we have absolutely valued who are going on to do uh, other things to fulfil their dreams. We really want to say thank you uh, to Phil Rosenberg, our Director of Public Affairs, and also to Judy Silkoff. They absolutely uh, have been incredible. I again want to be able to say how pleased we all are uh, that we've appointed uh, Michael Ouija uh, as our CEO since the last uh, plenary meeting and we wish him every luck and success. He's certainly a very patient having to, to deal with all of us and all of the issues uh, and he really is an inspiration. So I think that we are all very, very lucky uh, to, to, to have him. Um, also, we have a first, we have appointed um, Adam uh, Matanit, who is our uh, first ever uh, digital communications officer. So this is a very important role because we unfortunately are in the position we know that online uh, is the new front line against hate. So it's very important that we have a full-time person uh, in that role. Uh, we have a new uh, uh, executive PA for the senior management team, uh, Sarah Hussein, and I want to wish them every luck in their post. Uh, we also have an appointment, an internal appointment. We are so pleased to announce for Dawn Waterman, uh, who is now going to be the new Director of Education and Community Engagement. So many congratulations, uh, Dawn. And we are also very pleased to announce uh, Janine Rose, who is going to be the new Executive Director of PECUA. And we want to thank Jeffrey Leader for everything 
uh, that he has done, these exciting appointments. And Stuart Williamson also will be leaving from our accounts and we wish him every, um, every future success. So I don't know if uh, you would all like to um, let me know what questions or other things that you would want to say just to manage everybody's expectations. Um, we've got the clock on today for uh, two, two and a half minutes. And just to remind everyone, you can either ask a question or you can make a statement. It's entirely uh, up to you. And that Gary uh, Mond and myself will be, will be leaving uh, to join Ajax at 12 and the meeting will then be uh, conducted by Amanda Amanda Bowman. Now, I can't see who was first with their hand up. I think it was Jeremy Michelson. So over to you. Thank you, Maureen. Good morning, everyone. Jeremy Michelson, Manchester Great New and Central Synagogue. Um, I just wanted to alert deputies, uh, those who may need being alerted, that is, uh, you may all know that um, uh, according to the Times on Friday, Eric Zemmour, the um, one of the uh, man who claims that he wishes to be the um, French Donald Trump, uh, is, has been in London uh, trying to raise money and influence um, before the upcoming French general election, the presidential elections in 2022. Uh, he. It's very, very serious because he, um, although he was born uh, the, the, ch the children of uh, Algerian Jewish people, uh, he himself has taken quite a, a, a few attitudes that certainly very few of us, if any of us, uh, would agree with. Firstly, he's uh, in his TV punditry and his uh, journalistic um, activities, he's, he's been virulently anti uh, anti-immigrant and um, very, very racist. Um, he's arguing for this idea of the great replacement that uh, France is being, you know, is being replaced. Uh, the indigenous French population is being replaced by immigrants. Um, and he also defends uh, uh, Marshal, uh, Field Marshal Philippe Pétain. He's, uh, his record in the uh, Second World War claims he actually tried to save Jews from the Holocaust. We know that 40% of French Jews were murdered at that, you know, during the during the Holocaust. Um, he spoke to 400 people, according to the Times of Israel. He spoke to 400 people at Earl's Court. Um, and the point that I, I want to make is that I think we just need to make sure that we don't get sucked in. That basically that. Um, well, he may be Jewish by birth, but his attitudes are certainly not ones that we would approve of um, and that we must make quite clear that we want nothing to do with this man. Um, you know, what other French, uh, I understand there are 165,000 French people now living in this country uh, and uh, he's obviously trying to get support from them. What others do, well, that's up to them. But I think the uh, British Jewish community must make it quite clear. We want nothing to do with him. Thank you. I'm very pleased that you raised that. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Um, at the ACREF, which is the equivalent of the uh, the Board of Deputies, they've certainly uh, called him out as a useful idiot uh, for anti-Semites, and I've absolutely got no reason to doubt their their judgments. Thank you for everything that you're you're saying. Uh, it's certainly been very unpleasant reading about this in the last uh, few days. Uh, there's been other uh, other Twitter uh, feed uh, where France's uh, Caliph Cat, uh, who is my uh, equivalent in France, has also described him as a useful, uh, a useful Jew. And certainly, uh, it's obvious that, in my view, that no Jewish voice should go to him as a potential candidate. And I want to thank you uh, for for calling that out. Ab absolutely, thank you very much. Uh, the next person that I I have. And I'm not seeing just just to ask people, new deputies or people that haven't spoken before. Uh, please, please do also come come forward. Uh, David Safir. Thank you very much, President. Um, I'd like to first of all echo what uh, Jeremy just said, and I'm delighted that you have uh, not only been in touch with CRIF, as I'm sure you were at your EJC meetings and so on, but I hope you will continue to liaise with them because Eric Zemmour, of course, is uh, far worse than uh, a useful Jewish idiot. 
he's actually uh, creating or stoking racism, uh, which ultimately could backfire uh, and and affect the very people who he claims that he's championing. Um, but on another international matter, um, many of us are, of course, horrified by what we have seen happening on the border between Poland, Lithuania, sorry, Poland, Lithuania, and Belarus. Uh, and it's particularly uh, upsetting, I think, to any Jew to hear that there is now trading literally of these unfortunate people going on, such that it's been agreed that if Poland accepts 2,000 of them, then Belarus will fly 5,000 of them back to Erbil and so on. This is horrifyingly reminiscent of what happened in the 1930s and 1940s. It's horrifyingly reminiscent of what happened to Jews who were stuck between Germany and Poland in the 1930s, being thrown out by one but not accepted by another. And it also, of course, leads to our concerns I'm sure that you'll understand about what is happening to the people trying to cross the channel into the UK, especially when you hear that this government, our government, is considering processing them, processing, yes, that's the unfortunate word, processing these asylum seekers off, offshore by flying them perhaps to Albania, this sounds a little bit like what happened to Jews in Cyprus in the 1940s. It's actually horrifying that we should uh, stay silent on this and not at least explain uh, to the government our concerns from an emotional and spiritual point of view, if not from a pragmatic one, that these people, many of whom, in fact, very few of whom I'm sure are Jewish, are nonetheless uh, faced with a plight which we as Jews should be particularly understanding of. And then one last matter, may I just ask you if there's any progress First of all, with LSE, where, as you pointed out, um, the harassment of the ambassador was quite disgraceful the other night, given that the police have now said they see nothing to follow up on. Uh, if so, uh, there are many of us on this on this Zoom who are LSE alumni, and many of us who know the director, Damienu Shafiq, personally. If you would like us to intercede or in any way speak to LSE on behalf of the board, I'm sure we'd be delighted to do so. And the last point is, have you heard any more from Netflix since you? Uh, thank you. Um, you, you, I, you. The clock's cut you off, but I heard I heard the word so Netflix. So uh, just to say, um, in response to some of the issues that you raise, absolutely, we're in touch uh, with the CREF. I had the pleasure last week to be able to meet them uh, in, in Vienna. So we work, we do work very closely with the, with them. Uh, I will ask uh, David Mendoza Wolfson uh, to to look at the uh, position in relation to Poland, Lithuania, Belarus, uh, either during his report or he will come back to you during the week. But absolutely, I agree that is absolutely uh, appalling and horrible. Uh, at LSE, my understanding is, following the awful events uh, with the ambassador, that the students want an opportunity. Uh, to, to normalise things uh, at the moment so they don't want us to uh, intervene. We're really looking at this very closely and of course we will, we will do so, uh, but I think it's fair to give them the opportunity that they want at the moment uh, to try and, uh, try and get some sort of uh, normality uh, back. So I don't think they would, would thank us just at this point. Of course, it may change very, very quickly. Um, Netflix, uh, we are still um, very much uh, in contact with them. No, we do not have a satisfactory response uh, from Netflix. Uh, we are still adamant that they should uh, recognise what Roald Dahl has done. They should, they should, in our view, make some sort of uh, documentary about his anti-Semitism. And we're currently in the process of arranging some more uh, meetings also to discuss uh, uh, that with some other, uh, with a potential new trust. So we will come back to you on that. It's definitely not, not forgotten. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, I am going to ask... Uh, people that haven't spoken as often just to have a priority I think it's important uh, Felix Mara don't forget please to say your name and your constituency thank you good morning uh, so Felix Mara from uh, Finchley Reform um, yeah I spoke briefly last time didn't have anything to say um, so I, I noticed um, in uh, the international divisions activity report um, prior to this meeting, um, that there is a link for people who would be interested in joining um, 
um, working groups and I followed the link and it actually named the groups, which I thought was really, really helpful. Uh, apologies if any of the other divisions have posted such a link, but I just wondered whether they, they might be um, might be following suit. Uh, um, um, you know, obviously the divisions have different ways of going about things, but uh, I thought that was really helpful. Well, thank so you. Maybe not, maybe, maybe not so much a, a question I'd expect a specific answer to on the spot, but uh, certainly um, a, um, a request for more of the same. Thank you. Very, very, very uh, appreciated. Uh, Louise Elman. You have to come off mute, Louise. We've lost your, your picture. Lots of hi. Um, oh. Is that, is that not that back? That's it. Go on. Yeah. Yep. The floor is about. And Louise Elm, Jewish, Jewish Labour Movement. The, the strategy the board's been pursuing um, and its persistence is certainly now showing results in, in relation to dealing with uh, Labour anti-Semitism, um, including the, the dreadful case of David Miller. And there certainly is progress at Labour Party conference. Uh, there was a very important rule change on dealing with complaints. Expulsions of members are certainly now taking place. And I've now had enough confidence to return to the Labour Party and to continue the campaign from within. Now, I'd like to ask you, President, what are the plans of the board now to make sure that the progress that's been achieved in dealing with this dreadful thing is actually going to be maintained. We've made very great progress. The Labour Party is now in a very different place with a very different leader committed to dealing with anti-Semitism. But what will the board now be doing working with other communal organisations? Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Um, I agree that there's been great progress with the leadership, but I think the position on the ground in some of the constituency Labour Party uh, meetings still looks uh, pretty toxic. This is really going to be a very, very long journey. All of the communal organisations have really come together very well. Um, in this situation of fighting anti-Semitism. And as uh, Louise might be aware, I'm on the advisory uh, board, which has been set up to make sure that the um, Labour Party uh, uh, report uh, and the, the changes that were needed, the action plan following the Equality and Human Rights Commission damning verdict, uh, is actually uh, uh, in making sure that it's actually uh, enforced and these things happen. Uh, I do have a meeting in the diary with Keir Starmer, and we will be working uh, consistently to make sure that we are doing uh, all, all, that we, all that we can. But there is no easy answer to anti-Semitism in the constituency Labour Party meetings. We have to continue to call out um, anti-Semitism. But also, I think we have to recognise the great change uh, that's happened. And I think Kin Starmer has been uh, very, very sincere. Um, he, he, he had to work, and so did the top team, very, very hard to get these rule changes through at the Labour Party conference. And I think that he really does deserve recognition of that. It is a major change. And I think we need to work with the party in a constructive way to make sure uh, that all the changes that are needed get to get through. Uh, eliminating uh, anti-Semitism in the party, I think that that's going to come down to changing uh, attitudes about about Jews. And it's a very, very, it's a very, very long haul, but we need to recognize the great, the great success. And I will give absolute assurance we're working with all the mainstream communal organizations. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it's an absolute uh, reminder that we we have to we have to carry on, but we're very much joined up. And I will be stressing the importance of that in the meeting that I've got. Uh, with Keir Starmer shortly and he spoke uh, at the Labour Friends of Israel conference last week also very very supportive about of Israel and I think that also um, has to be has to be recognized of course there is disagreement in the community as as always but I think that the Labour Party is in a much much better place both in relation to anti-Semitism and in relation to support for Israel than it was a few years ago, but the journey certainly is just beginning, not ending. Thank you. Uh, Natasha Hausdorf, I think you were you were next. 
Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Natasha Hausdorff, UK Lawyers for Israel. I note the response in the President's report to a question which touched on the Irish Jewish community. Uh, now, last month, David Collier published a shocking uh, Ireland anti-Semitism report, cataloguing over a couple of hundred pages the extent of anti-Semitic sentiment in politics, media uh, and academia, and how more often than not the target of that vitriol is the Jewish state. I've just returned from Dublin, where at the invitation of the Ireland-Israel Alliance, I had the privilege of meeting and speaking alongside members uh, and leaders of the Jewish community uh, and the new ambassador to Ireland, Her Excellency Leron Bar Sader. And I was struck by how little coverage uh, there had been of the increasing plight of our closest neighbours, including uh, that shocking report. I had first-hand experience of the shocking sentiment expressed by certain Irish parliamentarians six months ago, uh, when alongside the former ambassador to Ireland, uh, Ophir Kariv, I gave evidence to the Oireachtas Joint Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defence. Will the board acknowledge uh, the material in David Collier's impressive and very disturbing report? And can we undertake to support the Irish, Jewish and pro-Israel community, recognising as we do uh, that the falsehoods that are being propagated against the Jewish state there are likely to spread? Thank you very much, Natasha. I'm very much in touch with my counterpart uh, in Ireland, Maurice Cohen. Uh, he's also part of the uh, European Jewish Congress. And it is, as Natasha has said, it's a really difficult, tough environment. Uh, the ambassador that has uh, just left on his very first day, I had a, a breakfast meeting with him and President now Her Herzog, as he now is, because we all made um, a fantastic uh, trip through Ireland. And, and BDS is, is really, really tough. And it is very, very difficult. They also on the ground uh, make it clear uh, or it's been made clear to me that they they are responsible for their community and they don't want the uh, UK community interfering uh, with with how how they are with government. But we are we are absolutely working with them. David Collier has done good work and uh, we must absolutely recognise the uh, very, very difficult uh, situation in, in Ireland. It is shocking and it's also uh, very, very difficult in, in, in Scotland, uh, but particularly, as you say, Vicky, Ireland and any help that can be given that the community want absolutely should, should be given. So thank you. Thank you for that. I think the next person was Vicky Harris. You have to come off mute, Vicky. I was trying, but I couldn't get off. Um, I would prefer, uh, Madam President, if you called me after Susan Pascoe and Joe Millis, because I fear they would probably um, want to say things that I want to say, and I'd rather they had the first go. Could I be called after them? As Yes, of course. I, I, I don't know what they're going to say. That OK, that's fine. Um, Susan Pascoe. Thank you very much. Susan Pascoe, Nesro Community. So I wanted to congratulate the board on everything they've done for COP26 and all the communities working so hard to try and reach our net zero carbon future. But what I found very worrying was that some protesters used the opportunity to protest against Israel and turn Israel into a climate issue. And I note in your report, you didn't condemn that. I know you spend your whole life condemning everything going on. So I, I know there's a, there's, there is a limit, but we are all very concerned with anti-Israel protests permeating all areas of society. And in the defense division, um, leading the, the higher education working group, and I can see Nina's got her hand up and, um, it's universities are just demonstrating how awful the anti-Israel situation is, but it, it's going on in the rest of society. And we have new generations of people, more generations of people growing up with, with anti-Israel protests as, as the norm. And for them, would they differentiate between what's going on in Israel and what China's doing to the Uyghurs? So the point I wanted to make is that continuously 
the board needs to convey the message as to why Israel acts as it does, why it needs to defend its security, which everyone sitting here knows. But um, I just wanted to bring that in in relation to COP because that was a particularly shocking and surprising example of, of anti-Israel anti protests there. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with you, Susan. It was, it was, it was shocking. I agree with what you say. Um, would you mind if I, I call Nina, I think, at this at this point, and then I can see Joe Millis is there and, and Joe Millis. Uh, Nina Friedman, President of the US. Thank Nina. you. Uh, Nina Friedman, Union of Jewish Students. Um, I just wanted to respond in part to what David Safir was asking about LSE and to reassure all deputies that we are handling the situation and um, we have a meeting with the Secretary of State for Education coming up in the next couple of weeks um, with representatives of the LSE Jewish Society and we will be making sure that everyone is aware that situations like this won't be allowed to happen again and um, government is being very supportive on this. Uh, also on kind of a grassroots level as I'm sure you're aware, it was Interfaith Week um, over the past week and the LSE Jewish Society hosted an interfaith event with the Islamic Society and the Christian Society and the relations between the different faith societies on campus are very positive and stronger than ever. So things are looking pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Nina. Um, I think the next person is Jo Millis. You're on mute. Hello. Yes, sorry, Joe Millis from Liverpool. In your answer to me on the first question about the Holocaust Memorial, you say our support for the memorial has long been part of the board's policy as set out in our manifestos. I'd like to ask really, where, where, when these manifestos are actually put together uh, and at which level these manifestos are discussed, voted on, um, debated, and it's not just the Holocaust Memorial policy, it's every policy, I think. Um, is it debated, at, are they debated at divisional levels, board levels, HO level? Which level precisely is this being debated? What kind of input does do uh, deputies have for these manifestos? And could I request strongly that by January, we start having uh, proper debates in plenary, should they either be hybrid, online, or indeed in person, that uh, we discuss all policies pertaining to the manifestos, which I believe next year there will be some form of uh, local elections. There seem to be elections every year nowadays. So could I ask that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the actual uh, preparation of the manifesto was before my time, but in relation to the Holocaust uh, Memorial, I understand this was prepared by uh, law remarks. The support that, that is overwhelming uh, for the memorial was, was clearly evident when uh, Eric Pickles, a huge friend of the community, he's come to, he's come to the Board of Deputies, um, he's answered questions. It's been very, very long-standing support for years. I really do not feel uh, myself, other people I respect may have a different view that there should be any attempt to have a vote and politicise uh, the Holocaust Memorial. I understand that there is an appeal, but I think it's very unlikely that appeal uh, will be successful. I think people should get behind the uh, memorial and look at the huge benefits uh, that there will be to the community and in fact society uh, where the memorial, I hope, will, will be in front of parliament to look and see the dangers of genocide and to take advantage of the wonderful um, education centre. It's my, it's my understanding uh, that deputies, and I have seen emails, were consulted uh, about uh, the manifesto, and I'm sure that if the manifesto is updated, uh, there will be consultation. As you would appreciate, we have one deputy, three opinions, 10 presidents. We have to try and reach a, a consensus. We can't, we can't, if we debate forever, every point, we'll never have a manifesto. And this is really, I think, one of the best examples of the Board of Deputies that we can show a consensus, we can tell government with the 10 commitments, what we need as a community. And I think that's a very, very strong thing to do. And we have to try uh, and retain that. Uh, debates are very welcome. We tried it last plenary and requests went out for debates and they, they dried up. It's up to you, 
to come forward, uh, you need a proposer and a seconder. We're very happy to very happy to do that. Um, I've listened to deputies that didn't want that, that have given feedback. They didn't want to keep having speakers, so we've got far less speakers. So it's up to you how you want to use want to use the time. I think a debate has to be constructive. It doesn't mean every time there's a, a, a debate um, necessarily that there's going to be uh, an outcome. People are still going to have um, different views, but um, if you want to do that, absolutely. But the debates need to be well structured and I hope people will put a lot of time and thought um, into, into what, they're, what they're giving. So thank you, thank you very much uh, for that. Um, Joe Miller. Hi, thank you, Ray. Uh, Joe Miller, Muswell Hill. Um, I've raised uh, a, a couple of times with you the issue of the sort of poor standard of uh, education and, and student wellbeing across uh, a lot of Jewish schools in the UK. Uh, and that it seems to be an issue that you don't think is important for the board to be involved in uh, in any way, really. Um, obviously, this culminated with the pretty shameful outcome that JFS, the largest and most well-known Jewish school, in the country was uh, deemed inadequate by Ofsted and put in special measures. I just want to read you the first sentence of the Ofsted report on JFS, which reads, leaders do not ensure that all pupils are safe from harm. And it, it seems to me that if ensuring that the 2,000 Jewish students that attend JFS aren't safe from harm isn't something for the Board of Deputies, then I don't really know what we're doing. Thank you very much for that. Of course, it's, uh, the welfare of students is absolutely paramount. We also have to look at our wonderful communal organisations and the work that others do and make sure that this is uh, respected. The Jewish Leadership Council, and of course, I am a trustee of that, have run uh, a wonderful wellbeing project. And also there is Pages, uh, which um, is, is responsible uh, for, for schools and has um, a huge uh, role to play in relation to education. We, we liaise with them, but the Board of Deputies, I don't think, um, is equipped uh, to actually um, go into schools and to change uh, the cultures. I can see you're nod nodding your head there, but we, we work with our, our colleagues, our other communal organisations, and Gary Mond will also uh, respond when he comes. But we can't personally take that work on, but we will work with the other communal organisations that do have uh, that ex that expertise but that that is not a role uh, that we're going to be able to undertake PQF of course is very important that's uh, that's a different issue but thank you uh, but what's very important uh, up and down the country uh, work for example that's undertaken by uh, Sheila Gewell uh, she 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 will she will actually tell you she sits on many of the the sac raise the local level work that's something that deputies can all can all ha help with but going into individual schools is not going to be something realistic that the the board of deputies um, is going to be able to undertake and pages uh, certainly has a much a much better relationship there to be able to uh, to do that and and the expertise but I, I do agree it's a really really serious uh, issue but the well-being project uh, that's been run by the Jewish leadership uh, council is, is is there to address a lot of those issues and they should be commended uh, so it definitely is in, is important um uh, Vicky, do you want to, Vicky Harris, do you want to now, now speak? Thank you. Um, good morning, colleagues. Vicky Harris, Hampstead Garden Suburb Synagogue. And thank you, Marie, for uh, deferring my contribution. Firstly, may I thank Henry Grunwald and Paul Edlin and yourself, Marie, for the um, tribute you gave to my beloved Machatenster, Flo Kaufman. Um, I, I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the family when I say we miss her very much. Secondly, could I uh, draw your attention, colleagues, to the fact that uh, Tony Leeper has now been elected as uh, the president, uh, not the president, forgive me, the chairman of the Constitution Committee. And I have a question. It, it may be it's best to go to him, uh, Madam President. But uh, I would like to ask when uh, there will be new uh, attempts to modernise the constitution, especially uh, to modernise and have a suitable code of conduct scheme. Uh, having said that, could I also extend my thanks to Michael Veggier for the wonderful I Israel education lectures that he's been giving, which I've had the privilege of attending. 
May I turn, however, to the question of the Holocaust Memorial. Um, Madam President, I hope you and colleagues will agree that the Holocaust was a wholly shocking but wholly unique event spanning many, too many years with a degree of planning that has never before or after been experienced. In those circumstances, to have a memorial that looks at the dangers of genocide when the Holocaust is a unique uh, event is, in my view, questionable. I would like, therefore, to endorse what Joe Millis has asked for, and that is effectively for a debate for deputies to say what they think. I have heard many deputies support it, but equally I've heard many others not support it. May I ask, Madam President, that we have debates on topics of major importance. I do not recall there being a debate on the Holocaust Memorial. I recall listening to Mr. Pickles talk about the need for a good design. There was not a debate about whether we should have it. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, personally, uh, if you want to, to try to bring a debate, you can, but I, I would be disappointed. The government have been wonderful to the Jewish community. They've given every support for this, uh, this memorial. There's been a full public inquiry. The chief rabbi uh, has given evidence. He, uh, he was very, very powerful in what he says. A number of key Jewish figures have, of course, like every aspect of uh, the community, there are some people that don't agree, but there has been a full public inquiry. I personally feel uh, it would be very sad to try and politicise uh, the memorial, which at the moment has been given uh, the go ahead. Uh, I'm absolutely in favour of it. And as I say, I'm very grateful to the government. I'm very grateful to uh, Lord uh, Lord Pickles. If there is enough support uh, for a debate and people want to uh, try and say that it shouldn't be shouldn't be there. That's obviously uh, a matter for for deputies. I, I'm I know that the uh, appeal will be ongoing, but I don't think there's going to be any change in uh, submission. But I respect that people have have different views. But again, I want to express my my gratitude to the government for supporting uh, the Holocaust Memorial, and particularly for all the work of Lord Pickles. And this is a very long standing policy, uh, even before my time, uh, Laura Marks was very uh, involved in the submission uh, that's in the manifesto. And I've seen deputies have a fantastic photo all, all holding up this manifesto. So I, I wasn't aware of people's uh, objections at the time and I've got so many people that want to support it. But again, uh, respect if people want to have different views uh, and if people want to uh, bring that forward. But I, I really I really feel it would be a shame and as a community, once the decision was made by government, that we should all get behind uh, the memorial. So we've got uh, a bit more a bit more time. So I'm just going to say we've got the speakers that left are David May, Mary Rainey Lee, uh, Sheila Gewell, Joy Wolf, Peter Vogel and James Harris. I will try and call as many as possible, but we will be finishing the president's um, uh, statement uh, at, at, at 10. Uh, David May. You were next. You're on mute. You're still on mute, David. Okay, okay. Dave, can you hear me now? Yes, we can, Dave. Good morning, um, Madam President, uh, fellow deputies, colleagues. Um, I'm from Leicester Hebrew Congregation. As a huge cricket fan, I've been um, following with astonishment the treatment of Azim Rafiq and uh, his time at Yorkshire Cricket Club. Um, and then all of a sudden we get this amazing comment regarding his anti-Semitic tweets, albeit 10 years ago, but they were 10 years ago. I just wanted to know if the board had any, um, uh, was going to make any representations to the English Cricket Board, English and Wales Cricket Board, regarding this particular situation. Now, that's, that's me done. And I wish you all a good march. I'm not quite recovered <laughs> enough to be with you today, but I wish you all well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, the board. The board has made a statement. Look, racism. Racism is is never acceptable. These situations are very difficult. Um, it seemed it seemed to us that um, the apology uh, when he was 19 for what was said was 
was sincere. Um, he has suggested that he does want to have a meeting uh, with the board. Having said that, uh, since since Friday, I think some uh, information might be uh, coming up that there are some other unacceptable uh, tweets, and that's something that I will be having to uh, to look at. But on the face of it, even if people, you know, if people have suffered racism, and I've got no reason to doubt that in cricket there has been a huge amount of racism, that can never be that can never be justified. Uh, I've now got a lot more people wanting to talk and I'm going to have to give um, apologies that not everybody is going to be able to talk because we have to finish at um, 10. So can I ask Sheila, Sheila Gewell? Sheila's gone off screen and I can't see Sheila. I don't know if anyone else can. Hi, I'm here, Marie. Can I just explain, Marie, that we can't unmute ourselves. So when you tell us to unmute, it's not us that's not doing it. I apologise. Okay, no, it's fine. So Sheila Gewald, Cardiff United Synagogue. Hello, everybody. A couple of things, Marie. First of all, can I please explain that uh, um, Daniel Elton, um, the board's um, cultural affairs officer, um, religious and cultural affairs, has actually consulted with Jeremy Michelson, chair of the regional council, myself, Nathan Baroda, James Harris, on the local government manifesto. So just to let Joe know that at that level, we have been consulted, especially on the educational aspect. Um, and we've been feeding back on that. There's a draft manifesto will be presented to the regional assembly uh, that Jeremy and I will be um, looking after. Uh, and also the shout out for the education. Thank you. I'm so delighted that Dawn is joining us as Director of Education. And to reassure everybody, we've got a work, wonderful working group uh, under Gary's division, and we're going to be working really hard fighting anti-Semitism, going back into school, just like we did before the pandemic. So that's all I wanted to say. So um, thank you. No, that's that's an absolute pleasure. If people can be as quick as can, we can, we might get more, more people in. James Harris. Thank you, Marie. I just wanted to touch on the points made uh, by other deputies um, about the Holocaust Memorial and the debate, well, whether we as, as a plenary should have a debate uh, about it. Um, I, I don't think we should have a debate about it. I think there, there has been for years ample time uh, to have debate on the issue. Uh, there was a planning application submitted. There was time for everyone uh, to submit their views. Um, uh, and the the application was granted consent. Um, I should also say it was uh, it was there was you know full public inquiry and and I think actually the time the time for debate is, on this is is done. Um, you know, it, as I said, it's received planning permission and uh, it, I, I hope we will go ahead. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say on that. Thank you, uh, Joy Wolf. Sorry. The floor is yours. Um, I, I just wanted to say that I was a little bit disturbed by the delegate with the blanket criticism of Jewish education. I, I think um, we have to think very carefully about taking Ofsted at its word in some instances. I have, um, I'm a governor of a Jewish school and also a governor of the local uh, special needs college. And um, there have been definitely questions of doubt as to some of the views that Ofsted have, have said. But in many areas, including mine, where I'm a governor of North Cheshire Jewish Primary and King David is here, and they are considered by, locally as the best of their kind. And there's a lot of very, very good Jewish education, and certainly in Stockport, um, North Cheshire is held in very, very high esteem. So I think to sort of blanket criticise Jewish education is dangerous. And I also think it's dangerous to absolutely um, think that there, is, there aren't certain times where some of the remarks of Ofsted um, are questionable. And I have personal experience of that. So I think we need to recognise how much good Jewish education is going on. Thank you. Um, more people are asking to speak, and I apologise that not everyone is going to be able to. Can I ask uh, Mary Rainier Lee, followed by Michael Ziff? Thank you, Madam President. It, it goes back to the uh, Holocaust Memorial. Now, I've been a member of the uh, Board of Deputies for some years, 
and I have never heard a debate on this. And I think that there are enough people who feel that there should be a debate. In fact, it is a democratic decision which ought to be taken by the board as a whole by every member uh, on behalf of their of their, their, their synagogues, etc. It's very important that we are seen to be either united or where there is a difference of opinion that it is highlighted. Not everybody does agree with the arrangement which has been made. There have been many, many discussions, petitions, arguments and so on about it. And I don't think that simply because it has already been approved, it should necessarily be assumed that it will be uh, approved by the majority of the, even the members of the Board of Deputies. And I think that we should actually have a debate. Then we will know whether it is supported, how strongly it's supported by the representatives of the Jewish Anglo-Jewish community. And I think it's very important that we do have a debate and I hope we will make time for it. Thank you, Madam President. Sorry, Michael, Michael, Michael's there, also from the same constituency. Could you state your constituency, uh, Michael? I am uh, actually Maccabi constituency. Oh, sorry, I apologise. You are. Mary, Mary is, Mar is Western Marble Arch. Um, uh, very quickly, I have been invited by Lord Kamalesh Patel, the new chairman of Yorkshire, to meet with him either the middle of this week or more likely the end of next week uh, in relationship to the uh, situation at Yorkshire Cricket uh, Club. I am a member of Yorkshire Cricket Club, so that you all know, and I was former chairman of the members committee there, um, not a, not a, and, and have experienced anti-Semitism at Yorkshire firsthand with actually Leslie Wagner some years ago. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask Denise Lester to speak because it will be about the Ajax parade. And I'm so sorry, everybody else, there just isn't going to be time, but you might, I, I need to allow Gary Mon to, to do his report afterwards. Denise, um, I presume. Thank you. It, it is about the Ajax Parade. To everybody um, who is joining, um, thank you so much for this enormous mitzvah. I would like to just pay tribute to Lauren Keelis for her fantastic organisation this year. And um, uh, that is the case. <laughs> that is the case. Um, Maria, uh, forgive me. Um, the Holocaust Memorial, the, I, I don't think there's any need for a debate. I think the, de the deputies... It, it, it should be mindful of our external comms. The government, I totally endorse what you're saying. The government could not be more respectful to us as a community. And this is one significant way. And actually it does us more harm than good after the fact to have a debate. So I'm entirely with you, Madam President, and all those that have been involved in government and, and, and those that have given evidence as well, including the Chief Rabbi. Denise Lester, South Hampstead United Synagogue, thank you. Madam President, for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Um, can I also say that I've had some very sad news uh, through, uh, just uh, from, from Karen Solomon, to say that the chair of her uh, synagogue, uh, Cheatham, a Hebrew congregation, Mr Bernard Stone, has passed away on Friday. And so we want to give our deepest uh, condolences and may his memory be be a blessing. I'm very sorry we can't have any more questions because we're out of time. Um, I would like to, but I hope that anyone who wants to ask a question uh, can uh, ask one of the, uh, the vice presidents for the divisional report, or else I will uh, take a note of your names if you want to email me and I will give you priority next time. So, <clears throat> sorry, the divisional reports will be in the order of um, Gary Mond, Amanda Bowman, Ben Crown and then David Mendoza Wolfson. So I'm now just going to literally hand over to Gary Mond and he is going to sit at my computer. So if you just disregard my uh, my name, we're just going to do um, going to do a swap. Over to you. Oh, I <laughs> thank you, Marie, and thank you, everyone. Um, uh, as Marie's just said, I'm not Marie Van der I'm Gary Mond. Um, I want to just begin with introducing my report. I want to thank the large number of deputies, both elected to my division and observers, who have been active in the last couple of months. And if you look carefully at my report, you'll see I've mentioned maybe about 30 names of different deputies who've done different things. And long may that trend continue. Um, individually, I would just 
also wish to echo the words of Marie and Sheila Giebold in welcoming Dawn Waterman and Janine Rose to their new roles in education. And you'll see that in section one of my report, uh, we emphasize the fantastic work that Sheila has been doing um, with regard to trying to boost the number of Jewish representatives on SACRES. And this has got a particular significance because ultimately what we really want to achieve is to get Jew Judaism and Jewish traditions um, taught far better in the non-Jewish school sector. We want to have a much better outreach program going forward. And this is all grist to the mill in trying to achieve that. In section three of my report, I will just say I'm really excited that we're going to be working with Laurie Rosenberg again. The older deputies might remember Laurie Rosenberg was once the director of education at the board many years ago. He's just recently taken on this role at Yad Vashem UK. And the idea of the twinning bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah project together with those tragic victims of the Holocaust who never had the chance to have their bar mitzvah and bar mitzvahs is something that really excites me. In section four uh, and the London Jewish Forum, um, some of you may have seen a report that uh, the Hertfordshire Jewish Forum was set up with an excellent inaugural meeting in the past week. And my congratulations to Adrian Cohen, Andrew Gilbert and Daniel Kosky uh, for their work in helping to achieve this. And there'll be, I'll write more about it in the December plenary report. Um, going forward, next section just to speak briefly about is section eight, which is on Jewish women's aid. Uh, we did a lot to support the Jewish Women's Aid Shabbat, which took place last weekend. I know a couple of deputies have asked me, um, what else will we do for Jewish Women's Aid? And with that in mind, um, Ruth Hart, who is the Working Group Chairman, Lauren Kalish and I will be seeking a meeting shortly with Jewish Women's Aid to, to look at that. Um, can I just say thank you very much? And I look forward to see what questions there are. Thank you. I don't see any hands up, or it might be screen here, but I can't see any hands. If there are no hands, then I think it's, I should hand over now to Amanda to give the Defence Division report. Okay. Okay, and I'll give, this, I'll give my seat back to Marie. Thank you. Okay, while they're moving around, I'm happy and delighted to present my report that covers both October and November. It's been a really busy period and, and clearly, as you've seen, several of the issues that Division has worked on has, have also been covered in the President's statement. And um, we've also seen some very good cross-divisional working too. Um, with the International Division, David mendoza Wilson and I have been exploring how our joint working group on BDS will operate. And with the CED and its chair, Gary, uh, we've been working together on safeguarding and the board's response to the ICSA report that was published in September. And also on the defence related work of the London, Essex and Hearts Jewish Forums, as Gary's just mentioned. So, for example, the division has been supporting the dozen or so local Jewish concerns WhatsApp groups that bring together rabbis, shul chairs, shul security, the CST, the police, MPs, councillors, and others concerned with the safety of local Jew Jewish re residents. On Tuesday, the board co-hosted with the Hearts Jewish Forum and the Jewish Leadership Council, the first councillors seminar for Hertfordshire. And um, this is part of the local government work that uh, the Defence Division operates. I want to thank all the deputies that participated both in the run up to the forum um, and also the very many others that helped this make this event such a success. We had about 15% of all Hart Hertfordshire councillors attending. And the seminar series will continue in 2022 with several more ways for us all to engage at local government level. Um, uh, there's been some discussion right now um, in the president's questions about the new Jewish manifesto for lo local government, which will be launched in the first quarter of next year. Over the last month or so, we've also had the first working group meeting of the media bias monitoring group. Thank you, Lawrence Julius and Ruth Abrams for um, taking that forward. And please, everyone, look out for how you as deputies can be involved in media bias monitoring as we go forward. We've had questions already about the, about the Asin Rafiq case and um, 
And we've also been involved with looking at issues around the Royal Court, uh, Royal Court Third, uh, Royal Court Theatre. And we have a working group that are considering a comprehensive strategy on how to address systemic anti-Semitism in sport and culture. Felix, you asked a question earlier about opportunities to get involved in the work of the, our working groups. On the 1st of November, the division hosted an open meeting to uh, look for deputies' priorities in terms of how we should be tackling anti-Semitism. And it was really helpful to understand from all of you that attended what matters most to deputies. I want to thank Jeremy Schott, Saul Freeman, Karen Maxwell and Jonathan Newman, as well as my vice chair, Ephraim Borowski, for helping to facilitate that session. And on 11th of November, Eleanor Lynn chaired an open meeting for all deputies of the and, and the family law group on assisted dying and the bill that's going through parliament. And so in addition to all of those that I've already mentioned, we also have working groups on higher education and campus, which is chaired by Susan Pascoe. She's already talked about that um, today as well as an interfaith working group that is looking at our strategy overall, as well as ensuring that we capture the experience and enthusiasm of deputies on interfaith. And on that particular point, Nina's already mentioned that it's been interfaith um, week this week. Um, and please do, as, uh, please do send any photos of any interfaith events that you've held through to Anthony Silkoff so that we can feature those in our board's communications. Thank you very much. Any questions? So I can see, I can see question, a question from um, either Paul or Ruth, or maybe Paul and Ruth. Hi, Amanda. Um, hi, Paul. I, hi. I did notify you that I wouldn't be able to attend the meeting on the 1st of November because that was the day I went into hospital I and I was in hospital longer than anticipated. Uh, I've been out two weeks now and you did say that you'll be able to find me something to do on the defence uh, committee. Uh, I've, not had any heard. I've not heard anything from you. Yeah. I'm still very much interested and very much wants to get involved. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And we absolutely will be in touch. We will be in touch. I, I take your notice and that um, um, absolutely all hands to the deck. So we'll be in touch. I can see Rick. Rick Cooper, you're next. Uh, hi, um, Richard Cooper, um, Portsmouth and South Sea Hebrew Congregation. Back in the summer, um, uh, I raised a complaint that one of my congregants had. Um, she's a member of the uh, National Education Union. There, you may remember there was a virulently um, uh, anti-Semitic masquerading as anti-Zionist article in the National Education Union uh, magazine. And um, you did um, uh, uh, help a lot by um, making representations to the union and complaining on our behalf. And I just wondered, um, now a few more months have passed, whether any progress has been made, particularly in terms of uh, that union or indeed any other um, uh, unions, and particularly with the education se sector, um, uh, you were talking about um, uh, educating them about anti-Semitism, looking at ways forward of training um, against uh, anti-Semitism. And I wonder whether you had uh, made any progress and uh, had any success in that regard. If you could just let me know, please. Yeah. So I know that Marie met with the National Education Union um, and we have been in, in correspondence with them both um, in advance of that meeting and, and subsequent to it. It's, this isn't going to be something that we're going to be able to tackle immediately. It's going to be a long haul, sadly, um, that there's some very entrenched positions and we need to be working very sensitively um, over the long term. With Dawn coming into position, it will be something that she'll be able to support us with. Um, it's not, it's absolutely still on the agenda, Rick, so please be reassured that it's not something that's going to be dropped. There's a, a strategy that we're working on within the division around 
um, what we're sort of gently calling board at work. So looking at different aspects of, um, of how we can engage in, in employment and union um, activity. And this will be part of it, but um, that's, that's um, currently being developed as a strategy. And I'm very happy to share that with you. And as we, as we do it, we'll pull together a working group. And if you're interested, happy to put, put, bring you in as part of that. Thank you. Um, David, you're, you're next. Thank you. Uh, David Gurevich, Birmingham Progressive Synagogue. I, I attended, as you did, the uh, uh, a seminar on assisted dying, and I thought it was ex excellently chaired by uh, Eleanor Lind, and I was thought the comments uh, and remarks made were thoughtful and carefully put. What I'd like to know is this, where does this lead and where is it going? What's the programme regarding this? Um, and really, what's its timetable in relation to the bill coming through? And how do we influence what's going to happen? I also wanted to make the point that I thought that uh, <clears throat> at the time I said that I didn't feel that the remarks made by Danny Rich were necessary or remain were necessarily representative of the liberal community. Well, I think they were speaking perhaps on the from the hierarchy of the community, but they didn't necessarily represent the individual um, members of the liberal synagogue. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um I think um, it's a really important bill that's going through Parliament. It's been um, heard in the Lords, so there's still some way for it to go um, right now. The Family Law Group will be reflecting on, um, on both the seminar and what their advice will be to the board um, tomorrow. There has a meeting of the Family Law Group tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. Um, and so um, I don't want to jump the gun and say what the board's position and what will happen next is until I get the family law group's advice. In the meantime, what I can say to all those deputies that weren't at the meeting is that um, it was, um, it, it laid out uh, the different views across the Jewish community to this issue of assisted dying. And um, what is absolutely clear is that there is no consensus on this. And so right now, what we, you know, what was very helpful for um, for those on the family law group and for me and all of those in the room was to hear the different perspective, perspectives and to understand why people have different perspectives on this. And to, um, but um, there is absolutely no one view within the Jewish community. And so it would be inappropriate at this point for the board to take a position because, um, because, because of that nature. Um, Vicky, you're on. Your hand is up next, Vicky Harris. Uh, thank you, Amanda. You've just actually dealt with the issue. May I support what uh, David Gurevich said about the uh, most interesting meeting and compliment him on his extremely valuable contribution to that meeting. And I'm grateful to you for echoing the views of the meeting that there was no consensus and for saying that uh, at the present, you do not think it would be therefore appropriate for the board to be making a statement. Those, as you know, are my personal views, but I'm conscious that others may not share that, that opinion. And I um, wonder, and I've sent you actually a private note in chat, whether this is something, uh, albeit rather gruesome, that deputies would welcome an opportunity to have a, a motion on which they can speak. And, and certainly that. Thank you, Vicky, for that. Um, but um, that's something that uh, we will discuss with the family law group. Joy Wolf, I can see that you have your hand up. Um, yes, I, I noted it in your report uh, that, <clears throat> that you have you're looking at uh, campus and and what's going on with students um, last weekend stand with us had an extremely successful fundraising campaign to extend our work um, and I would like to feel that there's more cooperation between the organizations that are working 
on campus and I would like you to know that we are more than happy to help in any way and would very much like to be kept informed and consulted and used because we have an awful lot to offer and we have uh, stand with us ambassadors on many many campuses and the success of our fundraising campaign means that we're going to be able to extend our work but I, I would just like to feel that we're all working together. Thank you, Joy. And you've heard me say on several occasions, and uh, I'll just reiterate that um, we um, we absolutely understand and feel very strongly that the Union of Jewish Students are the lead organisation for representing students on campus. Um, and I know they work with a with a wide variety of organisations, um, both communal and um, secular. Um, across the community and across all the different campuses and um, but I absolutely hear your point um, at our meeting on deputies priorities on anti-semitism the um, the terrible um, anti-semitism that students are facing on on campus came out as one of the absolute priorities and so we will double down our efforts to support UJS chaplaincy and all others working on campus to make sure that we can uh, try and eradicate this as best we can. Flora, Flora Flank. Welcome. Yes, I have to unmute, sorry. Is, am I not unmuted? You are. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, um, I completely agree with Vicky Harris regarding a debate on assisted dying. I think this is a very important, very emotive, very, very difficult um, idea about assisted dying in the Jewish community. And I, I understand that there's no consensus, but may I ask you, what is the, is there any view given by the chief rabbi and the reform, the liberal? I mean, you say there's no consensus, but do each one of our groups, our Jewish um, you know, brethren, our groups, have a, have a, is there no consensus amongst them, amongst our various sections of the Jewish community? Sadly not. I think is what? A, sadly not is the simple answer. Um, you know, typically um, you, we have some people within the community saying no, um, that's just not for, it's just not something we can um, we can support, and others within the community saying um, this is something that's up to individual choice, and it's something that could be understood. I can see Janet, uh, Janet Tresman's hand up. Janet, is there something you want to add on this in particular? And then I'll go to Ephraim and then David Joy. Good morning, Janet Tresman, Finchley uh, Progressive Synagogue. I spoke on the liberal Judaism um, aspect of the uh, assisted dying uh, bill on the uh, uh, family law group of which I've been a member for several years. Um, there is no consensus, which means that if there was a debate and a motion that was voted upon, those that did not support or supported the motion, the others would not, would, uh, it wouldn't be a view of the board. It couldn't be a view of the board because of the very strongly held opinions of some of them, which would then uh, be um, uh, treated as a minority view. Uh, that it, it can't be a debate in that manner on this uh, important topic. We've had this before where we've had different, we hold different views. We don't have to vote for it one way or the other. The discussion um, um, was in fact with all different um, um, stances being heard uh, at our meeting. I don't think there's a problem with holding a, a meeting, a further meeting of all deputies but um, to discuss it, but this was an open meeting I think, Mamanda, was it an ever meeting of all deputies or just of the yes, Defence and Working Party? No, it was all deputies. So I wouldn't, dis I wouldn't support another meeting on it. We've had our meeting, notice was given, and there are different um, stances taken and very strongly held views on both sides. It may well be that as the, as the bill goes through Parliament, we can hold another open meeting in the same way. Um, but as I say, it will be discussed mm. at the... Family law group. Uh, Ephraim, you were next. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say some of what Janet has just said, and I'm sorry to disagree with my good friend Vicky, but 
I do not think this is an appropriate topic for a debate at a plenary, and I would strongly counsel against it. We've all ridiculed the BMA for changing its position on the basis of three votes uh, on, on one side or the other. And we would be in the same position ourselves, no matter which way a debate ended up. We can have the debate, but we should not have a vote. That's a different matter. And we've, in a sense, had the debate by having the discussion at, uh, at the open meeting. And I think that is probably sufficient. The second thing I want to say is that, that does, it does not follow from that, that the board should not put in a response to the consultation. The board has to preserve its position as the body that speaks for the Jewish community at large. And it can do so by saying that there is a division of opinion on this. And that is exactly what uh, Skojek does in Scotland. I should say, by the way, that I'm a Frank Borowski and I represent uh, Gift Gutenberg Synagogue. Um, so these, I think, are the two points that, first of all, we should, we should not have a, devote, a vote because that will merely reinforce the division, but that does not prevent us responding to government and reflecting the division. Thank, thank you, Ephraim. Um, I just have got a time check in that, um, in order to, for other divisions to be able to report. Um, I'm going to ask um, David Jewell to go next. Oh, thank you. And I, I would only, I mean, this is a risk of being repetitive because I said the same thing at the meeting. Uh, David Jewell from Bristol and West Progressive Jewish Congregation. What came out of the meeting was that there are things that we can agree on. We can all agree that the purpose of all of this is to relieve suffering. But it then follows that for some of us, but not for others, that might include assisted dying. And there are two things that I think really are important that there are differences between the denominations, but there are huge differences between Jews who have the same religious affiliation. And so pitting different bits of, of the different denominations against each other is really um, unhelpful. And then two things follow from what I said earlier. One is it makes it really important to, uh, in, in any bill for there to be conscientious objection written in so that those individuals who feel that this is against their conscience don't feel coerced or threatened or anything else. And also for the same reason, and, I, and of course this goes almost without saying, the importance of safeguards for those people who are in their last stages of illness. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got one minute. So um, Jerry, if you take 30 seconds and Robert Stone takes 30 seconds, I'm happy to take from both of you. Jerry, you were next. Thank you, Jerry Lewis, Hampstead Synagogue, speaking from Israel. Just a brief note. I heard, I may have misheard, so forgive me, that there is a proposal by HMG, the British government, to align England with the um, uh, arrangements that I think exist in Scotland, by which people will no longer be allowed to have arranged marriages until they are 18. This may have an impact on the Haredi communities where consent is given at the age of 16. And I'm wondering if we as a board might be able to discuss with the Haredi communities authorities and HMG to ensure that there'll be no conflicts in the months and years to come over this rather pressing issue. Obviously, it doesn't apply to me. I'm still unmarried, but that's a separate issue. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Jerry. We'll pick, um, I'll pick that up outside the meeting with you and the Haredi community. Thank you. Robert Stone, last question. Uh, I'd like to suggest on the question of assisted dying that there is a consensus among Brit British Jews on, on an important issue. There is no consensus on, among British Jews on whether we should drive on Shabbat. But I am a member of a synagogue which does drive on Shabbat. I will die in the last ditch to, uh, to, to fight a law which would require people who do not drive on Shabbat to drive on Shabbat. So in relation to assisted dying, we must make sure the, allow, the law allows people who do not wish to do it, who do not believe they are allowed to do it, not to do it if they think that, and people who do think they're allowed to do it, then that's another issue. We'll disagree on that. 
But just as with Shabbat or Kashrit or anything else, the right of Jews to practice their religion must be, inco must be incorporated in the law. Thanks, Robert. Um, we'll, as I, I'll say for, for the final time, when, as I hand over to uh, my next honorary officer, um, we'll pick this up with the family law group who will um, consider it and advise the trustees on it. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for lively conversations. I'll go back on mute. Over to you, Ben. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Amal. Thanks, everyone. Good morning, all. Uh, just a few things to bring out uh, or follow up from my report, which was in the papers. Just before I do that, obviously, as well as the board's treasurer, I'm also deputy for Peter's Marks. Just wanted to thank uh, all the deputies who have been involved in various ways, concern, uh, submissions, even some donations to uh, help in the last couple of months. Obviously, we have long, ongoing discussions with the City London Planning uh, uh, Council with uh, with various other entities and bodies around these very large developments which are being proposed around Peter's Marks. I don't know if anyone else had a chance to live stream into the uh, Planning Committee's discussions a couple of weeks ago. It was incredibly heartening to hear, you know, a, 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 you know the, 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 uh, the, the representative there talking so seriously about the significance of the site the volume of correspondence they have received, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the extent to which they hadn't previously appreciated its sort of centrality to uh, Jewish history in this country and its importance as, uh, as, as, as a heritage site and as a living community. And that is uh, sort of all uh, hugely appreciated as and when there are more developments, I will uh, let people know. Uh, just to follow up a few things from my report, first of all, uh, in terms of uh, I'll deal with one question, actually, that I believe uh, Vicky Harris asked earlier. The Constitution Committee has, has been set up for a new, uh, new triennium. We were very glad you know, to, uh, to, ha to have that sorted, to have an excellent set of objectives uh, on board. Uh, in their terms of reference, one of, the, uh, one, of, one of the things they've been asked to look at is, is refreshing and reviewing the, the Code of Conduct. So I'm sure that will be taken forward uh, at some point soon. Uh, a few things that deputies would be emailed about this week. Uh, there was an email from Anthony Silkoff asking for deputies to send through pictures, videos, and other bits of uh, media paraphernalia which the board could use in, you know, for recent projects. Uh, if people have been involved in Mitzvah Day, people have been involved in Interfaith Week, people have been involved in Mizrahi Heritage Week, and are, are going next uh, Tuesday evening to the, uh, the, the joint event uh, at JW3 with Harif. Uh, if people can send through to Anthony, media they have from that then we can use that to promote and uh and and demonstrate and and, and support these these causes to the extent that uh deputies are able to provide things uh deputies would also have been emailed about a survey which went out with the papers for the meeting about uh, our options for hybrid online meetings going forwards i see looking at the survey that there have currently been uh, it was 48 at the beginning of the meeting but uh, deputies have been busy we now have uh, 65 responses. That's a healthy number. It would be good if we had at least 100 responses to get a good range of views uh, and what people are, what people's preferences are. I'll send out a reminder with the link or I'll have a reminder sent out probably on Monday and we will hold the survey open for a couple more days thereafter. Uh, and then we will, we will send people up. Then I have a provisional venue book for a, uh, a trial hybrid meeting in December the provisional meet, uh, location book for a trial meeting in January. The survey does seem to be shading at this point that people would rather wait until after the Christmas holidays before uh, having an in-person meeting, but we'll see once some more uh, options come in. Uh, clearly, there are people who want to come all the way back into in-person meetings you know, without really an online option as soon as possible. Clearly, there are people who want to stay online permanently and fully. I think everyone has to uh, bear in mind that whatever outcomes we come to are going to be reached based on our overall views of depth, you know, our, our overall views of all depth is combined and isn't necessarily going to suit every individual person, but we will work to accommodate them as much as possible. Can I also also ask deputies to please continue to return in the skills and contacts and deputies agreements forms that were sent out at the beginning of the triennium. 
deputies ask how they can be involved, deputies ask how they can engage in the board's work. If we don't know what people's interests are, if we don't know what people's skills are, we can only be we, 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 we can only be informed about the people who have sort of completed this documentation and sent it back to us. The deputies agreement, of course, also contains undertakings about confidentiality. And if people want to be substantially involved in the board's work, then that needs to be uh, committed to as well. Uh, I will also flag, you know, I think even since the meeting, we've had more through from the common correspondence, we've had uh, common contribution, we've had a, 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 a lovely and sizable uh, payment through from a large United nice Yorkshire, which is very much appreciated. Um, this obviously continues to be an area of board's work not just for the money, but also for the legitimacy that being supported by a large number of, uh, of, of shawl goers and members of the community outside the shawls um, support and engage with. Uh, more will be coming on this in the next couple of months as we, we move towards the next season of uh, shawl bills and so forth. And I just want to flag that coming up to thank everyone who has worked over the last year to collect and encourage deputies, uh, shawls to pay and uh, pay through and, and individuals to donate through a common contribution, which is, uh, I understand, it, it is an extra demand on people's pockets in a challenging time. It also underpins sort of our, our essential work. I will throw open to questions for a few minutes. Uh, James, I see, is there first. Um, thank you, Ben. Um, that was... Uh, very interesting. I guess I, I've been asked uh, this week by a constituent of mine um, to ask you if you could please, I know you touched on um, you know, the sort of receiving communal contributions, but could you just please clarify uh, for a constituent of mine who's asked me, um, what are people actually paying for in their voluntary fee for the board? I think that is the, con the communal con contribution. Yes, um, so. But it sort of appears to me and ha has appeared to me sort of following that question that the average, as it's sort of called during the pew, doesn't really see uh, a reason to pay and doesn't see a return on any payments they might choose to make if indeed they do make it. And just finally, um, as I've said to you before, Ben, privately, I'm very happy to lend my full support and solidarity uh, to Bevis Mark Synagogue. Um, and I'm happy to provide any advice I can on this. Thanks, James. Thanks very much. Uh, so yeah, just to, uh, this is nothing that's not in the account, but we'll just we'll summarise for, for the benefit of all deputies. The communal contribution is £30. Uh, we ask for £30 an individual. Different shawls and different denominations handle it in slightly different ways. It is the largest single source of funding the board receives. This year thus far, we've had just over... Six hundred thousand pounds in, which means more than twenty, probably about twenty-five thousand Jews who are shul members or who are otherwise you know, contributing in this way are supporting the board's work. This is kind of a remarkable number, uh, and like I said, it is a sort of a core source of the board's legitimacy. When we say we're a representative body, it's not just we have deputies of every organisation, but we are supported on a grassroots level by tens of thousands of uh, by tens of thousands of, of Jews in this country. Uh, the common contribution is our single largest source of funds kind of pays for everything. It pays for our professional staff. It pays for everything we need to keep the lights on. It pays for our specific projects. As we move out, uh, like, like I said, in terms of, what, you know, uh, it, as, as we move towards the next round of shore bills and so forth, the common contribution usually comes in very heavily January, February, March each year. We will look to refresh and update our, our collateral in this regard. But essentially, it pays for our advocacy work, our, you know, our, our, our democratic support, our community engagement. Uh, it pays the salaries of, every, of everyone who works the board. And uh, it, pay, it pays for, I should say, it pays for everything except for the things the board does that aren't charitable. So some of the political advocacy, some of the Israel-related work, not very much, but a little bit of the Israel-related work, and then things like deputies' expense and so forth. Those are all paid by the rep fee, which is paid by... Uh, Individual individual member organisations that goes into a limited company. I won't bore deputies again with with the structure, but I if, if I say that the refresh collateral, as they say in the trade, is coming around on this in the next month or so. Hopefully that will sort of address that. Uh, Paul, 
thank you for the, thank you for calling me. Um, I want to ask a question about the proposed hybrid meeting. Unless I've got it wrong, I think it's going to be starting next month. Is that correct? If if it's one of the questions in the survey is whether deputies would be more comfortable waiting till January. Essentially, I know a lot of people have holidays and so forth planned. And there's also a question about whether or not people could be will, will want to kind of they could be pinged in this and that, but we'll we'll see what people think. Okay, well, my my question is, uh, sorry, first, sorry, Paul, I thought I thought that was your question. I don't know if the regional. The clock. Sorry, I, I won't be very long. Um, I want to ask if regional, if you consulted with the regional chair about this, uh, because um, if there are going to be hybrid meetings, will the regional deputies be? Uh, applying and be able to travel the same travel arrangements as before when uh, when uh, they they were not disadvantaged over travel to London. That's first. That is the main question. Also, with disease levels of COVID now raging really highly and increasing in Europe, is even December or January the right time for this? I mean, maybe you should be thinking in terms of March or April. I know deputies are anxious to get back to face to face meetings. We all are, but the risks are immense that's my question sure thank you very much paul so like, like i said everyone is going to have a different view on this different people are going to have different uh, risk appetites different uh different concerns about coming back in person not can assure deputies that whenever we do meet it will be in compliance with all the government recommendations uh we will consider whether for example we might need people to uh we might ask people to take tests the day before whether we will need vaccine certification all these different things we will follow for the guidance for, uh, for events of this size that get put out by Public Health England and by you know, the NHS and, about, and by other entities, and we'll work through those details near the time. Uh, I think if we, like I said, we'll see what, see what the responses are in terms of December. If we do push to January, then we will recirculate something and, and the uh, environment materially changes, we will recirculate something and have another go. But I think, like I said in, in the report, what we're looking to do, first of all, is to do a trial, is to get, say, 50 or maybe 75, but 50 feels about right, deputies in a space together, have everyone else online, and see if we can get a, a hybrid format with, you know, with a quality of, of uh, participatory experience at that stage. Because I think we, we know from, and I think we all know from diff different experiences we've had in the last couple of years, but it's, it gets harder to make the online experience properly participatory the more people there are it physically in the space. So we'll start off with a relatively small number of people. We'll run a trial, we'll maybe run two trials, and then we'll see sort of where we are thereafter. Ultimately, in, in the long term, if we get back to a situation, which I really hope we will, where uh, either where we can, we can all comfortably meet in person together, everyone who wants to, everyone who's able to, then... So the other then then the the current arrangement, well, the old arrangement, I should say, in terms of deputy expense and so forth, will will, will apply once more. Uh, and that it may be that between those costs and the costs of uh, putting on a hybrid meeting, we may spend more money than we're spending than we spent in the past on meetings. Uh, and that's obviously something the FNO will have a look at. But I think we know how important it is to have these meetings, uh, engage as many people as possible. Again, I don't have the full set of results yet, but it's very interesting to see the the you know, the the, uh, the feedback from deputies on how participatory the online meetings are for people who weren't coming to meetings before. That's something we absolutely have to retain, and so we'll work all these things out so as we go along. It's something you know I was speaking to the board professional team about the other day. Running hybrid meetings is not something that, that there is a single uniform plug and play solution that people in the wider world have, have worked out and we can just adopt. Everyone's going to need to work this out for their own organizations you know, as it develops. I ask the, the deputies patience as we try to do that. Uh, Natasha. Thank you, apologies. It was, um, I needed to be allowed to unmute. Um, the president's uh, response to my question concerning the, the shocking report of anti-Semitism in Ireland by David Collier uh, was while uh, expressing concern about the content of that report. Uh, the response was essentially that the Board of Deputies does not wish to interfere in issues concerning other communities. 
Um, I'm raising this again because I've just been sent a tweet from the 12th of October by the Board of Deputies Public Affairs Officer Daniel Sugarman, which I find especially concerning in light of the President. Sorry, Ms. Natasha, is this a question specifically for the Treasurer? Uh, oh, forgive me. Yeah, and, 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 and I should note that my understanding is that Daniel's account does not say the board employee, obviously. Board employees are entitled to their own personal views. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily appropriate to bring up, unless things are being said with a board hat, to bring up what an individual professional member. Well, certainly it's in the course of the meeting that we've had this discussion and that the position has been made clear to me. Yeah, okay, can I take the next question then, please? I only have a couple of minutes. Mary. Oh, thank you. I think the point that I want to make is actually the question of what we get from a board of deputies. I think it's very difficult when you're in a synagogue uh, organization to tell everybody what's happening. And it occurred to me, and I think it is an idea which I have asked our president to consider, and he says he's agreed, but unfortunately, um, sorry, can you hear me? Because I've got yeah, a notice saying, fine, Mary, okay, fine. Uh, it, it basically is to forward to our members when we uh, uh, speak to them every week, we send out a newsletter, is to send a link to the Board of Deputies' own weekly newsletter so that they can, if they want to, have a look and see what the board is doing because we cover a vast number of things that we do that we can't possibly tell our synagogue members, everyone, what we are doing. Uh, maybe it might come in a board meeting, but the fact of the matter is by sending that with a weekly newsletter, which we send out, we could actually reach the whole congregation and they would all know what they're getting for their money. And they're getting an awful lot for the 30 pounds that they put in. Uh, and I would ask you, <laughs> Ben, to consider whether you could encourage co con um, constituencies all over uh, for the Board of Deputies to follow that as an idea because people will then know what's going on and when they're asked for their £30 in the annual uh, uh, thing that goes out to them, they'll be happy to pay it because they know what they're getting and see what the value is. Thank you, Mary. I think that's a really, that's a really great point. I, mean, I would encourage deputies to, uh, you know, deputies obviously have different relationships with their communities. The Board we do spend a lot of time, we do send out a lot, as, as deputies know, we send a lot of emails talking about the work we're doing and so forth. The extent that that can be wrapped up into communications that go to your shoulder, go to your, your, your constituencies, uh, that's always appreciated. It helps obviously bring in the money, it helps promote our work in various ways, it shows what we're doing, um, and, uh, and, and, it, and it is positive in, in various regards. So yes, yeah, so please, uh, if, if you don't do that and you, you're, and you want to, then please speak just your president, speak just your administrator, and we'll go from there. My time is up. I, can, I, so can I take 30 second questions from Jonathan Brody and Felix Mara, and then we'll be done. Um. And there was another answer from Marie to a question about the accessibility of the board's current offices that said that our lease ends next year and the plan isn't to remain there. I just wondered if there's any update you can give deputies about what the aspiration is for the next set of offices, whether we're we renting or owning and location and so forth. Yes, yeah, so I, I, let me deal with this offline. What I would say is that, um, that there are a, a, a various considerations including um, obviously cost, location, availability of meeting rooms, you know, a, a, a small work group will have a look at these things. There are a couple of obvious community focused options uh, and we will, uh, I think something will come to the FNO in, in due course and we'll go from there. We are likely gonna be moving out of the current accommodation at UJ in the new year. Uh, it is a question whether we move immediately to somewhere else or whether we take something temporary uh, and then and 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 look uh, and look in, in 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 the near future. I don't want to say too much because obviously there are people we are we are commercially in touch with, and uh, you know I don't want to say we've got something great lined up. We really want to go there uh, because then I expect our the the rent will go up. But I will I will keep people posted as soon as there is something concrete 
which uh, yeah, which, which can be discussed. Felix, very very quickly. Good afternoon, Ben. Um, yeah, uh, coming back to the question of hybrid board meetings, uh, apologies if I've missed something. Um, and really, for the benefit of new member, new deputies like myself, um, did you have hybrid meetings before the pandemic? No. What we used to what we used to have was an, was an in person meeting, and then there was a live stream. The meeting was visible online, but there was no participatory experience. So one of the things that we've asked in the survey is, well, would people like to go back to that? And unsurprisingly, not many people do. We would really like, personally, my view is, if we can possibly have a hybrid experience that works equally well for people in person, people online, at a reasonable cost without driving everyone insane, we'll do that. It may logistically not be possible, given our budget and other constraints, but we'll go from there. I see. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I've run on a couple of minutes over. Thank you. David. Thank you. Can I just say um, goodbye from Gary Mond and myself because we're very shortly be joining Ajax. Um, can I also give a shout out for Mits for Day and thank Mits for Day for all of the wonderful work and also all of the wonderful work that you're doing uh, is really appreciated. And to thank all the deputies that are coming to support the um, Ajax uh, parade. I also uh, have uh, want to say that I uh, didn't say, and I, I've been told about the very sad passing uh, of Lottie Malinek, who is the mother of Irene Radstone and Angela Cohen, our deputy, I want to pass on the sincerest condolences. And also we should be proud of all the work we do. 30 pounds is very cheap. If you think of everything we do for the community, whether it's education, uh, science, fighting, fighting anti-Semitism, uh, all of our international work, all of our, uh, our volunteering. I think it's an incre incredible uh, value for money. And of course, we've, we've got the film that we, we, recently, we recently did. So I want to say how proud we are and we should all uh, tell people how important it is. And £30 really is a very, very small price to, for pay for all the wonderful work that all of you do. So thank you. So Gary and I will be leaving the meeting. So I'm going to hand back to uh, David mendoza Wolfson. Uh, and see you all later and stay stay well. Thank you very much. Um, you guys have the report, so I won't go over it in too much detail. Uh, we've had a couple of months of really positive engagements, both with uh, embassies and with the government. We're going to be continuing those engagements uh, over the, the next month, and you'll see more of all of those sorts in, in next month's report as well. Um, we had uh, a divisional meeting last month to discuss our working groups, uh, all of which now have leads. And I just want to very quickly talk through what those working groups are. We have a, a working group that's going to be uh, monitoring uh, the UN on its votes, uh, its anti-Israel votes, uh, that so often, um, frankly, uh, are just anti-Semitism uh, disguised. Uh, we have a group that is going to be monitoring global media for anti-Semitic tropes. We're going to have a group that's uh, looking to twin synagogues and, and create a formal system to twin British synagogues with synagogues around the world. Uh, we're going to have a group looking at uh, plural, Jewish pluralism in Israel. Uh, we're going to have a group exploring ways to engage further with the, the Commonwealth and also our British overseas territories. And we're going to have a group that changes every few months focusing specifically on different regions of the world. Uh, we're starting with Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, so those are our, our working groups. There's the information on the divisional report. Uh, if you want to know more, please do contact me. Uh, as Felix uh, very kindly uh, pointed out on the report, there is a link. Uh, if you are interested in joining one of these working groups, uh, Lauren is going to send that link on the chat now also so that everybody uh, can uh, click to, to join and look if if they want, of course, once uh, once the meeting's over. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you have any questions, I'm really happy to take them. So thank you very much. And over to all of you. Waiting for a hand up. Ah, here we are. Natasha.
thank you very much. Um, I am uh, I, I am trying to raise uh, the issue again of the Ireland anti-Semitism report because I have been sent in the course of this meeting uh, a tweet from the 12th of October by uh, Board of Deputies Public Affairs Officer Daniel Sugarman, which I find especially concerning in light of um, the President's response to me earlier this morning. Uh, the President's response to my question concerning that shocking report was, of course, to express concern about the content of it, but essentially to state that the Board of Deputies uh, does not wish to interfere in issues concerning other communities. Now, I wasn't able to raise this while Marie van der Zyl was still at the meeting, but perhaps you would be good enough to deal with it, David. Uh, it's a tweet downplaying the... Sorry, hype. Natasha, sorry, I'm going to jump in here. Yeah. I think I said this already once. I'm looking at Daniel's tweets right now. It says at the top of his, in his Twitter bio, all and of my tweets are my own opinion, ben, not of those of the boards. I'd, ben, I if you would allow me to finish the question. He's asking about the tweets of a board employee and what they're doing in their but own time. Now, I understand there was some sort there of- There is a broader, forgive me, before. if you will allow me to finish the question, there is a broader issue here I'm trying to highlight, which this tweet has prompted me to think about. I think it's in particular something that the international division should be taking notice of, because clearly sentiments like that are entirely contrary to a principle of non-interference by the board as a whole. Uh, and I, I don't think that we can have our cake and eat it, especially where, uh, Comments like that are downplaying the problems highlighted by the report and, and calling the outpouring of concern on certain aspects of social media that was prompted by that report insulting. Now, it's concerning to me because that sentiment seems to be taking the ground from under the feet of our communal colleagues uh, in Ireland in particular, and it is very much at odds with the principle of non-interference. And so, in particular, in the context of the international division, my uh, question and my... my <laughs> My ask would be that we give careful consideration to how the board uh, and its officers uh, respond to issues of concern in other communities uh, so that we as the Board of Deputies can make sure that we're supporting our communal colleagues in other jurisdictions um, and not downplaying any issues that uh, they uh, may be having to contend with. And that in particular, I think, is work that the international division will be good place, uh, in a good place to do. Uh, thanks, Natasha. So like Ben said, what I'm not going to do is comment on, on anything that was maybe tweeted out by a member of staff. That's not appropriate. With a broader point, I think it's fine uh, to engage, of course. Uh, we do uh, interact with other communities. Every time we speak to a foreign embassy, we reach out to the Jewish community in that country. Uh, we're reaching out to uh, the Irish government, the, the Irish embassy, and in doing so, we're also working with the Irish community uh, there. I mean, we are very concerned by reports of anti-Semitism in all countries, particularly one uh, so close uh, to ours. So uh, we are engaging with the issue. We will continue to engage with the issue. Um, as far as we're concerned, anti-Semitism anywhere is, is too much anti-Semitism. Um, and as you know, the International Division uh, works hard to, to make sure that we are knowing where it's happening and are interacting with communities to make sure that they are and feel safe in the countries in which they live. I hope that kind of covers the, the broad points that, that you were trying to make then. Uh, are there any other questions? I noticed that Colin had his hand up, but I wasn't sure if that was on this issue. Colin? Um, Just to say that as I'm at chair of the Constitution Committee, and you've actually made a ruling with which I agree, so I don't need to say any more. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Are there any other questions on the report of the International Division? Uh, David, please. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I just want to, can you, thank you. Um, I just want to support Natasha, really. I think you, it's, it's, it's apparent to me as a new deputy, that it seems to me that I don't really understand the the regulations, particularly of or the committee structure of the Board of Deputies, which just reminds me of another bureaucracy. But just for a moment, just looking at you, David, and you, Ben, in response to her question, which was entirely reasonable, is that you, it was quite clear that you just shut down completely. And I think there is a point to be made here, and that she was trying to make a valid point regarding anti-Semitism in Ireland. And it didn't seem to me that you gave a satisfactory response. 
I'm not asking for a response now, but I think it is clear that there is an issue here that needs to be thought about more widely, and I would support her questioning of this. Uh, thank, thank you, David, and I hope Natasha didn't feel shut down at all by my answer. I'm thrilled to have Natasha on the International Division. Uh, like I say, this is about combating anti-Semitism uh, in Ireland and elsewhere, and that is absolutely what I'm here to do. I'm, I'm not here to, to shut down any discussion or, or debate on, on that issue. Uh, so thank you, David. And uh, Paul, if we can take a question from you, I, I, hopefully on maybe something else. You know, it, and I, I didn't want to speak again. Paul Edwin Glasgow, Jewish Representative Council. I do agree with what David said, and I, I feel that and Natasha made a very good point, and I felt you did shut her down, both of you, in an unreasonable way as an observer. And I do feel that there really should be a code of conduct for staff as well as deputies. And what a deputy, certainly an officer, tweets and what a member of staff tweets is highly relevant to the Jewish community and the job they hold. And I would suggest in this particular controversial tweet, as some people see it, that you should refer it to the chief executive of the board. I appreciate you both for the things that, that, that you are saying. Again, I'm not trying to shut anybody down here. I am uh, trying to engage with the matter at hand, which is anti-Semitism in Ireland, which is entirely within my brief. And I, as I have said, and as I will say again, uh, that is something that is of deep concern to us and that we will continue uh, to, to fight. Um, Colin, do you want to say something? I, I'm guessing again, this is to do with the Constitution Committee. And uh, then I think, I'm being told that, that my time is up, unfortunately, but if you have any other questions, please do email me. Uh, and, yeah. It's exactly to say that what you, Ben and David have said is correct. You cannot have a public meeting discussing a tweet which may or may not have been private, which most of us have not seen, and which engages the rights and wrongs of what an individual has said. It's entirely improper. And the Constitution Committee would not approve of it. And there has to be a restriction in a meeting. And what are, the rulings that have been given are entirely correct. Thank you. And thank you, David. Thank you, Ben, for your interventions. Um, I think <clears throat> everything that is going to be said on this issue has been said. Um, and so I'm going to move us on. Thanks, David, for your report. Um, I'm going to hand us over now to uh, Michael Newman, the Chief Executive of the Association of Jewish Refugees, who's going to address us for um, a few mo minutes around welfare provisions for refugees. Michael, if you could, you are unmuted. Thank you. Over to you, Michael. Thank you very much, Amanda, and good morning, everybody, or good midday to everybody. Um, if I could, someone could allow me to share my screen. I've got a short presentation I can share with you all. Okay, hang on. One second. Right. Can you can you all see that? Yes, we can. Thank you. OK, so uh, thank you for the opportunity. I had the opportunity early in the week to speak to colleagues, fellow chief executives uh, from across the community, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the wider community uh, today. It's on the subject of support that is available to Holocaust survivors and refugees living in Britain. And I'll explain briefly about the work of the AJR and the Claims Conference and a group of organisations that we have convened to help us disperse that support. When I addressed my fellow chief executives in the week, uh, it was against the backdrop of a number of charities experiencing uh, difficulty about funding for different projects. And specifically, we were talking about how we could support ourselves and our ongoing work uh, in very challenging financial circumstances. The AJR, uh, with the funding we receive from the Claims Conference, is in a very 
is in the polar opposite position. We are very fortunate that we have very generous funding that together with our own, as our own finances allows us to provide uh, additional and extensive support, financial support to Holocaust survivors and refugees. And the important thing to stress is that this funding is exclusively for that community. To give you an idea, this year, the AJ will receive just over uh, 10 and a half million pounds altogether in funding from the claims conference that we then disperse to Holocaust survivors and refugees. Now, eight and a half, 8.6 million of that goes on home care, which enables us to make sure that any survivor or refugee, these are people who experience Nazi oppression, living in the, anywhere in the United Kingdom can continue to live in dignity, comfort and security in their own homes. This funding does not apply for people who are relocated to residential homes or care homes, uh, but it is to enable people to live in their own homes. And what I'll go on to explain is that we're supporting people by awarding hours of care. There are around 325 beneficiaries of home care at the moment. We sadly lost a number of people earlier this year, some to COVID, uh, but we're also enrolling new people on home care every month. And we are in the middle of an outreach program, this is part of it, to try and reach people. So if there are people that you know of in your communities, we're also doing an exercise through the synagogue denominations, through social media and our own outreach to partner organizations but if you are aware of anyone who could benefit from this program or any direct support for uh, two Holocaust survivors and refugees, that's why we are here. That's what we want to do. Part of what we have to do is to register people into the Claims Conference database. Now, the Claims Conference is the international organization that negotiates with the German government and to a lesser extent, the Austrian government and industry uh, across Germany and Central Europe that provides social welfare and reparations to survivors and refugees. And you can see there the extensive hours of support that can be provided. There is a distinction made between survivors, people who- Michael, endure... can I just interrupt you to just to say that we can't see the slide that you're on, um, oh. the, the view that we've got. It may be that um, I don't know why that is. I think you're further on. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I've scrolled through. Does it come back to it? You see me scrolling through? No, we can't see you scrolling. So it looks like you're going to have to click. Okay. Okay. I'll just do that. So you can see there the on this screen at the top that there's extensive support to survivors and refugees. There is a distinction made between them. Survivors, of course, being people who were in occupied Europe, in camps and ghettos, life in hiding, false identity, and refugees, people who came before the war, kinder transport, domestics, and even they can receive 105 hours a week of care per week. And because of the funding we have, we can pay as much as £12 an hour for care and £9 an hour for cleaning. We know that the cost of care is far higher, probably double that, but this is a contribution towards that. And very generously, the funding, there is a financial eligibility, but a person's own home and any car they have or any pension income is disregarded. We have other funding alongside home care that pays for other parts, other support, food, transport, medicine, home adaptations uh, from an emergency assistance program. But the thrust of what we're doing is for home care. So just briefly about the AJR, the Association of Jewish Refugees, uh, this is our 
80th anniversary. We were founded in 1941 after the refugees were let out from internment. And we're marking our anniversary with a, uh, a couple of commemorative projects, including planting 80 oak trees around the country to places that have a connection to the refugee community. We're predominantly a social welfare agency, but we're also a, a district disperser of grants for Holocaust education and remembrance. In fact, we're the largest national benefactor of projects and programs. And we're also reaching out to the next generations, primarily to engage with them so that they can reinvigorate our membership as our first generation members inevitably dwindle, but also at the moment so we can reach them to help reach their parents who might need our support. You can see there that we're also the lead agency of the Umbrella Group, which is an ad hoc committee which spans the community. It's a real cross community effort to engage with agencies that support and represent Holocaust survivors. So some of them have a historic role like World Jewish Relief and the Anglo Jewish Association. And of course, the 45 Aid Society, the boys who came post war. But today it encompasses agencies from the Orthodox community, uh, Stanford Hill, Gateshead and Manchester, to Jewish Care and the AJR. This is a screenshot of an article that was in the Observer a few months ago. This lady was previously unknown to us, but we enrolled her and now she benefits from around 70 hours of home care a week, a 97 year old Auschwitz survivor. And that's what we're looking to do. It can take a few months, a few weeks, few months to register somebody if they're previously unknown to us. So it's critical that we identify people who can benefit, we enroll them, we make sure they're eligible so that when the time is right, they can benefit from the home care program. So just to recap, there is extensive lots of lots of support exclusively for survivors of refugees, and we would appreciate any help you can give us uh, to identify people that can benefit from that. Thank you. Michael, th thanks so much, and thank you also for all the work that you're doing um, for. Um, for the Holocaust survivors and others. Um, it's brilliant to hear about the positive impact of the work that you're doing. Thank you. And thanks for sharing with all deputies today. Uh, the last item of, on our agenda uh, is to um, give an opportunity for uh, Amos Schoenfeld, the deputy, a deputy for, um, and also co-chair of the Social Justice Committee to talk about the work of the Social Justice Committee and also to recognize that today is Mitzvah Day. So um, Amos, I'm gonna hand over to you. We've got five minutes. Thank you so much, uh, Amanda. Um, I'm just having a little bit of trouble sharing my screen, but whilst I'm doing that, um, my name is Amos Schoenfield, Deputy for Masorti Judaism and uh, co-chair alongside Talia Chain of the Social Justice Committee. You will have seen, um, oh, I can't actually share my screen, I think. I'm gonna see if it's possible. Um, I, um, you will have seen the report that's in the papers about the fantastic work that's happening. We have four working groups covering refugees, uh, climate action, Practical Social Action and Mitzvah Day and Intellectual Disabilities. Um, on the third one on Mitzvah Day it is of course today Mitzvah Day. There are 400 projects happening across the country. It's fantastic to see so much action. Um, and ah, here we go. Um, and we wanted to encourage deputies to take part as well. Of course, every year there has been a lovely uh, sort of collection um, or some kind of action that deputies can, can take on together. Um, and we wanted this year to be no different. Um, so thinking of the projects that we support uh, or the sort of the streams of work that the Social Justice Committee are supporting, and you can read more of that in the paper, 
um, we wanted to highlight three charities or three small charitable projects that uh, deserve our support as deputies. Um, the top two uh, are ones that we would be delighted if deputies donated to as part of an appeal to uh, to sort of keep this to keep to keep their work up. Um, Goods for Good, which is spun out, I believe, from World Jewish Relief. Um, which is a global logistics operation to ensure that uh, businesses and individuals can get goods to people seamlessly. So this is, uh, you know, something that might be, um, might not be the most sexy kind of project, but it is absolutely vital. And a small donation of either items you can see on their website or of funding will be transformative. Second, we've got J Tree, which is a project of Eco Synagogue and part of a global coalition to ensure that we are uh, in the taking part in the efforts to plant trees to combat climate change and to contribute to climate action. Um, we've already uh, planted thousands of trees through through J Tree, both in the UK and Madagascar and beyond. Um, and we wanted to make sure that uh, we're supporting that as well. Again, a small donation will be really transformative. And then lastly, um, there's a charity called Screen Share UK. Um, which was started uh, last year in the community. Uh, they re repurpose and refurbish all uh, used laptops that are at least, sort of, sorry, seven years uh, old or less. So relatively new laptops that people want uh, no longer using and gifting them to young refugees in the UK, helping to tackle the digital divide that has been all too apparent during uh, during COVID and, and social distancing. Um, if you have uh, or you or your communities or your workplaces have used laptops that are not being used, that are sort of being left on the side, they can be put to great work and being being used to transform people's educations, people's work, and people's lives uh, through Screen Share UK. So please do look at all three. You can see the lovely little dinosaur QR codes. So if you do have your phones out, I hope you've been looking at them uh, look, using the QR code so that you can, you can donate directly from those links or learn more directly from those links. If not, you can see all three charities here. We've got Goods for Good, J Tree, and Screen Share. Um, as this is not a division report, I'm not, I don't have to take any questions, which is great for me, um, but you have both mine and Talia's emails in the deputy lists. So if you want to learn more about what the Social Justice Committee is doing, the great work that our working groups have just started getting into, uh, then you can feel free to email any of us. Um, I'm mostly just stalling for time to make sure that you're looking at the QR codes, but thank you so much for this time. And I hope that uh, throughout the rest of it today, the 400 projects and that people are, are taking, getting involved and, and being sort of be, being, be, being part of the Mitzvah Day effort. Uh, thank you so much, Amanda, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Amos. Brilliant to see that there are opportunities for deputies to get involved with their own local community Mitzvah Day project, but also if you choose to, there are three fantastic projects that are being supported by the board and the Social Justice Committee. And uh, thank you, Amos and Talia, for all the work that you're doing and everyone else on the Social Justice Committee. We look to, forward to regular reports back from you during the triennium. Thank you very much, deputies. That brings this meeting to a close. I can't believe that we're doing it to time. So thank you, everybody, um, for helping us to do that. For those of you that are going to the Ajax Parade today, I look forward to seeing you there later. For all other deputies, I look forward to engaging with you over the next month and seeing you at the next uh, board meeting in December. Bruce, is it a point of order that you have? I see that you have your hand up. I'm uh, still Bruce Greenberg for Northampton Hebrew Congregation. I would just like to wish fellow deputies for next Thursday, happy Thanksgiving. And for a week from tonight, happy Hanukkah. Thank you, Bruce. And thank you. Um, thank you for reminding us. Uh, there's so much going on between now and Hanukkah that I'd almost forgotten that it's uh, that when we meet again, we'll have, we'll have been Hanukkahed, so to speak. Um, but thank you all. And I will um, draw this meeting to a close.